Introduction to Two-Stage Ammonia Plant This course has three modules, and in this module we will cover a general introduction to the two-stage ammonia plant. We will go through a brief overview and functions of the main components of the two-stage ammonia plant in Module 2A. In Module 2B, we will concentrate on how we construct and the function of components in line installations on the low pressure side of the plant and, of course, on the high pressure side of the plant as well. Then we will briefly introduce you to plant optimization in Module 2C. Here you can see a single stage refrigerant plant, because it has one cooling device. We have an area at the left side of the diagram, where we need to keep a fixed temperature. It can be a cold room or a plate freezer. To do that, we need to extract the heat from the area where we need to maintain a fixed temperature by using a cooling device. Unfortunately, more heat is generated by the process as we operate the cooling device, very often by an electric motor. The heat extracted from where we want to maintain a fixed temperature and from the operating device is sent to a condenser. In the condenser the heat is transferred to the air outside. This represents a general refrigeration process where heat is removed by a two-stage refrigerant plant. Here we have two cooling devices, low pressure and high pressure, running in parallel with an intermediate cooler in between and all the heat from the cold store in the cooling devices is sent through the condenser and expelled outside. Here you can see a schematic diagram of a two-stage ammonia plant. We have cold stores and a plate freezer, two cooling devices, low pressure cooling device and high pressure cooling device, and a condenser. Now, when we design our plant and its components, the first thing we have to do is to choose the refrigerant. Secondly we need to decide if the plant is a one or two stage plant. And finally we need to choose the compressor. The refrigerant chosen must be suitable for the environment where the plant is installed that is harmless to people if used inside shopping areas, where everybody can be exposed to the refrigerant if a leak occurs. But if used in a restricted area, where only qualified personnel have access, any refrigerant can be used. CEN 378-1 The refrigerant chose not to maintain a positive pressure in the plant, but this will depend on the actual evaporating temperature. The refrigerant chosen must maintain a maximum pressure below the stated PS maximum operating pressure for the plant. The refrigerant chosen should have the highest possible heat capacity. The price of the refrigerant should be as low as possible. The price can be decisive, as is often seen for ammonia, CO2 and HC plant. For a two-stage ammonia plant installed in a restricted area and only qualified persons have access, we can choose any refrigerant. Now we'll move on to the EN378 standard and look at the different types of refrigerants. Here refrigerants are classified into six categories based on flammability and toxicity, and these six categories are grouped into three groups. That means, if we have group 1, which is non-toxic, non-flammable, we call it A1, if it is in the second group, which is slightly flammable and toxic, we call it A2, B1 or B2, and finally we have A3 and B3, which are toxic and flammable. If we look at alternative refrigerants, we have medium and long-term refrigerants which are expected to be used for longer periods without any new restrictions. The star across is the one which can be used for longer periods, and halogen-free refrigerants are the most simple and those which we can expect to use for many years without restrictions. If you consider the environmental impact from these refrigerants, we can see that one of the refrigerants is R717. This is ammonia and has no impact if we use the scale for ozone depletion potential, and no impact if we use the scale for global warming potential. That means ammonia is a very good choice. Also if we consider safety, we have these safety groups, A3 which is toxic and flammable, and A1 which is very good but out of the range for standard products. That leaves us with two refrigerants, ammonia and R723. R723, which is a mixture of 60% ammonia and 40% D-methyl ether, is not as cheap as ammonia. So we'll leave that, which leaves us only with ammonia, which is well priced and can be found in the B2 group.
we have to consider what is the highest pressure we can expect from the refrigerant we have chosen. We will look first at the lowest pressure on the evaporating side and the highest pressure on the condensing side. The pressure of ammonia on the low pressure side is just about atmospheric pressure, which is really good, because there will be no atmospheric air, or humidity in the system if it leaks. So that your cooling process will not be disturbed. If you look at the highest pressure, the reason we have chosen to consider a condensing temperature of plus 55 degrees Celsius is that, if we look at standard 378, which says that cool air condenser should be installed in a location, so that it is able to withstand the pressure of a condensing temperature of plus 55 degrees Celsius, here we have a maximum pressure of 22.1, which is certainly acceptable for all its components. When we look at heating capacity, that means how much heat each kilogram of refrigerant can carry from a plant into a condenser. Ammonia has the highest heating capacity compared to other refrigerants on the list. When we look at the price compared to all other refrigerants except water, of course, which can also be used, ammonia is very cheap. Therefore it is highly suitable when seen from a commercial point of view. Now we will look at the factors to take into consideration when making a decision about the number of cooling stages for our plant. We need to decide the number of cooling stages in the plant we are constructing, that is a one or two stage plant. This will depend on the refrigerant we have chosen, the lowest evaporating temperature, the highest condensing temperature, and what compressor types and models we have available. This also depends upon the design conditions, and the design conditions are, a suction temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius and a condensing temperature of plus 35 degrees Celsius. Piston compressors can typically be used in one stage up to pressure ratios of 1 is to 8, for ammonia. Pressure ratio means the pressure at the discharge side divided by pressure at the intake side of the compressor. Screw compressors can be used in one stage within the maximum differential pressure stated for each compressor model, which could be 6, 16, 20 or 25 bar. Differential pressure means the pressure at the discharge side minus the pressure at the intake side of the compressor. If we consider the actual design conditions, the worst case we can have is minus 33 degrees Celsius at the suction side and plus 55 degrees Celsius at the discharge side. That means the worst case we will ever reach is a pressure ratio of 23 bar, and the differential pressure of 22 bar. This means that we need to construct a two-stage plant. Here we have two designs for two-stage plant. The first is a two-stage direct expansion plant and the second is a two-stage plant with a pump separator. We are going to use the second design. In this diagram, we have a cold store with a fixed temperature, a cooling device for low pressure, a cooling device for high pressure, and a condenser. The room temperature of a cold store is a fixed temperature. There must be a pressure of 0.2 bar to maintain the temperature and the pressure of the condenser at 22 bar. We don't know the temperature of the cooling device at low pressure, the discharge temperature, or the suction pressure of the high pressure cooling device. Now we have all information necessary to decide the next step. We have the low pressure side, and the high pressure side. Now we'll look at how to calculate the two-stage intermediate pressure. Once we have decided to go with a two-stage plan, we need to calculate the intermediate pressure. By intermediate pressure, we are talking about the discharge pressure of the low state and the suction pressure of the high state. If we are talk about suction pressure at minus 30 degrees Celsius, that is 1.2 bar absolute, and discharge pressure at 35 degrees Celsius, that is 13.5 bar absolute. The intermediate pressure can be calculated by taking the square root of the suction pressure at the low pressure side, multiplied by the discharge pressure at the high pressure side. You can also calculate the temperature by converting the pressure using a refrigerant slide. You can also use cool pack to calculate the intermediate pressure. Here you can see a diagram with a two-stage process from cool pack. 
you can see suction pressure at minus 30 degrees Celsius, discharge pressure at plus 35 degrees Celsius and intermediate pressure. The training plant is not realistic, in the sense that we usually don't have only one temperature. It is obvious that the suction side of the high pressure stage can be connected to rooms with a higher temperature. In that case the evaporating temperature required in these high temperature rooms will then be the intermediate temperature or pressure. Now we will look at the pressure ratio for a two-stage ammonia plant at the worst case, that is, minus 33 degrees Celsius at the suction side, and plus 55 degrees Celsius at the discharge side. This gives a pressure ratio of 5.25 or 4.4 bar, and a pressure difference of 4.25 or 17.75 bar. Based on this, we need to choose the compressor. Now we will look at the main components of a two-stage ammonia plant, cold store plate freezers, cooling device for low pressure side, cooling device for high pressure side, cooling device for intermediate cooler, condenser, and other accessories. The function of an evaporator is to extract the heat from a room or product into the refrigerant flowing through the evaporator. In this plant we have two types of evaporators both working as flooded evaporators, meaning that the refrigerant flowing through the evaporator will only partly turn into vapor. The required flow is determined by the capacity of the evaporator. For air-cooled and flooded evaporators, you can often see circulation rates of 4 to 8 times the amount evaporated. For plate freezers, the circulation rate will depend on the orientation of the plates, often 10 to 15 times, horizontally, or 15 to 30 times, vertically, the amount evaporated. The purpose of the cooling device is to transport the refrigerant which has accumulated heat to the high pressure side where it can be pushed out from the refrigerant circuit. A traditional cooling device will consist of one compressor unit with an electric motor, oil separator, oil cooler and valves. The compressor, in an industrial plant, will most often be an open type. The function of the condenser is to extract heat from the refrigerant. In this plant we have a condenser which is an evaportive condenser. The condenser removes heat by using air flowing outside the tubes and water which is pumped in and runs down across the tubes. So the latent heat of the vaporization of the water is also used for cooling. This is somewhat more efficient than a condenser only cooled by air. However you need to be in an environment where the relative humidity of the surroundings is low in order for this to work. Accessory components of a two-stage ammonia plants include, intermediate cooler, pump separator, receiver, air purger, system cleaner. We will look at the function of each of these accessories individually. The intermediate cooler acts as a condenser for the low pressure side and evaporator for the high pressure side. It functions as subcooler of the liquid going to the pump separator. The hot gas coming from the high pressure side mixes with liquid ammonia, evaporates some of the liquid ammonia, which means that the amount of refrigerant going through the suction side of the high pressure compressor is greater than the amount of ammonia delivered from the low pressure compressor into the intermediate cooler. The intermediate cooler lowers the high temperature, which could be around 100 degrees Celsius. By evaporating the ammonia we maintain a certain temperature in the intermediate cooler, which could be around 1.8 degrees Celsius. There is a liquid line coming from the receiver to the ammonia in a coil and then it goes out here to a pump separator. In theory this will have a temperature of plus 75 degrees Celsius because the condensing temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. When this liquid comes into the coil surrounded by liquid ammonia which has a temperature minus 1.8 degrees Celsius, this will be cooled down, and when this cooled liquid goes to the pump separator, this will increase the capacity of the plant. So it also functions as a sub-cooler of the liquid going to the pump separator. The intermediate cooler comes in two versions, the advantage of the closed type, used here is that the liquid maintains a high pressure until it reaches the pump separator, that is the pressure difference for the float system delivering liquid to the pump separator is high pressure minus low pressure. Whereas in the open type, 
the pressure in the liquid line changes from condensing pressure, that is, high pressure, to intermediate pressure, or the suction pressure for the high pressure side in the intermediate cooler. The pump separator acts as a reservoir for the liquid going to the evaporator, and by controlling the pressure inside the separator, it ensures the correct evaporating temperature in the evaporators. The pumps ensure the correct circulation rate through the flooded evaporators both at minimum and maximum cooling load. Additionally the oil coming from the compressors is accumulated in the oil collector. The receiver acts as a reservoir for the liquid coming from the condenser, and as a buffer when the cooling load changes. From the receiver liquid flow to the intermediate cooler, where it will be sub-cooled before it continues to the pump separator. The air purger is connected to places in the plant where air is trapped. Inside the air purger there is a cooling coil where ammonia vapor condenses, whereas air and other non-condensable gases will remain in a gas state and take up more space. When the volume of non-condensable gas has increased to a preset volume, it will be vented into the atmosphere, through water to eliminate the smell of ammonia. The system cleaner is connected to places in the plant where water and oil are trapped. Impurities can be set for cleaning manually by hand or automatically. The cleaner has a heat source where ammonia is evaporated leaving only water, oil, and other impurities at the bottom, from where it can be drained. Thank you for your attention. Log on to Dan Foss Learning, to enroll more courses.